In this example, we're going to take the model of the lioness that we created in the modeling tutorial and we're going to show how to create the 3D roughing, 3D finishing and the cutout profile toolpaths to cut the lioness that you can see here. We're going to use a variety of techniques including multiple roughing toolpaths and show you how you can evaluate the preview to make sure that the tool you are using at different stages is appropriate. So let's go to File, Close, and then we'll go and open an existing file. So from the Lioness Files Project folder, we're going to open the Lioness underscore 3D underscore modeling dot CRV 3D. Okay, so if we go to the 3D view, you can see this is the model that we finished off with in the modeling tutorial. So now we've got our model, we can jump straight over to the toolpaths tab to create the toolpaths to actually cut this part out. So let's go to this icon here to switch over to the toolpaths tab. And so the first thing that we need to do is set up our material. So let's go to the set option here and I'll open up the material setup form. So you can see that we're working with three quarter inch material. Okay, so that's correct there. XY position is in the lower left hand corner. My C0, we're going to set off the material surface. Okay, then we can move on to the model position in the material. So this is where our actual model, the lioness, sits within our three quarter inch block of material. Okay, you'll notice here that we are also displayed with the model thickness currently at 0.4439. So we're just going to change that value here. So to change that, we use the set option there and then we enter a height that we want this model to be. So in this case I want this to be 0 0.375 and I'm going to go ahead and press apply. You can see that now I've made that change, you can still see in the 3D view that we still have all of the detail in the lioness there, so that's okay. So we'll just close that down. So now that we've altered the model thickness, we can actually go ahead and position that within our material thickness. Now I am going to apply a very small gap above our model of 0 0.025 and this is just to allow for any inconsistencies in the actual material thickness. So we've got a gap above of 0 0.025 and then I have my model, the lioness here, which has a thickness 0.375 and then we're going to have stock underneath the actual lioness model which is going to be 0.35 as displayed by this number here. So then we'll check over the rapid C gaps above the material, make sure that they're appropriate for the tool to lift out and move to other positions in the toolpath and check over the home start position. Might want to change the Z gap above the material and make that 0.5. Then we could go ahead and press OK. So we're going to show you a technique where we're going to be using two roughing passes to hog out the majority of the material before running the finishing pass and the final cutout. The first pass that we will look at is the Z level roughing pass and this is going to clear out material in 2D toolpaths around the majority of the area around the part. Then we're going to use a raster rough pass which will take us much closer to the finished surface almost like a semi finish and this will allow us to have much less loading on the actual finishing tool which will run that little bit quicker. Now it's not essential to do this two stage process but it can be quite a useful technique for certain low level organic models like the one that we have here. So let's go into the 3D roughing toolpath. It can be accessed from this icon here. So I'll open up the 3D roughing toolpath form. The first thing that we need to do is specify a tool that we want to use to hog out the material. So if we use the select option here that will open up the tool database. In this case I'd like to use the quarter inch end mill, check the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine and then we could go ahead and press OK. Next thing in the form is we need to specify our machine in limit boundary, model boundary, material boundary or the selected vector. Okay, in this case we don't have a vector, we're just going to look at using the actual model itself as a boundary. So we're going to use the model boundary option here. 
Then we move on and we've got a boundary offset option. Okay, so we would like to apply an offset here so that the tool rolls past the actual model and so it clears material right away down to the actual modeling plane. That way we get a nice clean edge that we can actually profile around. So let's put in a value of let's say a quarter of an inch for the model boundary there. Then we move on to the machining allowance. And so this is where we can specify an imaginary 3D thickness on our model. And so it will keep the roughing tool a little bit away from our finished surface. And that ensures that we've got some material to cut with the finishing tool. And so it really just minimises the chance of the roughing tool chipping into the finished surface. So we're just going to leave that as 0 0.03 in there. Then we move on to the roofing strategy. Now, as I said, our first roofing pass, we're going to use the Z level option. And so we're ultimately doing 2D machining around a 3D object. Okay, so we'll raster in X and we'll profile that last. And then we could just go ahead, give that a name. We're going to call this one 3D roofing Z level. And then we could just go ahead and press calculate. So we can see the toolpath there, so let's just preview that. I'm just going to undraw animate preview and we're just going to preview the selected toolpath. And so we can see how the actual finished part will look. And so you can see the actual Z steps that we've got. Now this is okay, we could move on and create the finishing toolpath. But this is where we could really benefit from calculating a second roughing toolpath just to get us that bit closer to the finished surface using the raster option. So let's just put that in Z and we'll close that down. Then we're going to go back into the 3D roughing toolpath. So we're going to use the same quarter inch tool but we're just going to change the parameters a little. Now the way that the raster works is that it creates a 3D toolpath over the part but it will recut the same areas if the pass depth of the tool is shallower than the model. Now because we've already used the Z-level rough to clear it out, I can do this raster in a single pass. So let's go to the edit option here and so using the edit option will just allow me to override the sentence for this tool for this particular toolpath only. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the path step for this much deeper than we would normally and in this case we're actually going to go in at half an inch. So let's just go ahead and press OK there. And then the machine limit boundary, boundary offset exactly the same, same for the machine allowance. The only thing we're going to change is the actual roughing strategy. So we're going to look at using the 3D raster and we'll raster that along the X axis. So we'll give that a name, we're going to call this one 3D roughing raster and then we could just simply go ahead and press calculate there. And so by entering that half inch pass depth I've allowed the software to cut over the surface of the model in one single pass. And that's fine as we've already cleared out the material using the Z-level pass that we created previously. So let's just go ahead and then preview that toolpath. Okay, so you can see how that part looks there. And you see it's done quite a good job at clearing the material over that 3D model. So let's just put that in Z there and we'll just close that down. So now we can go and run a finishing toolpath. So we use the finishing toolpath icon there that will open up the 3D finishing toolpath. So here we need to select a tool. So again use the select option to open up the tool database. In this case I'd like to use the 8th inch ball nose there. Okay, so check over the settings here. And it's important to look over the step over. So the step over is the distance between each pass. So the smaller the value, the better finish that you're going to get, but it may take longer to cut. For a good finish, somewhere between 8 and 10% of the tool diameter should do the trick. So in this case, we're just going to drop that down to 8% here. And we'll go ahead and press OK. Then again we're going to use the model boundary offset this time as we are using a smaller tool we're just going to set the offset there to be 0.1. 
Okay, area machine strategy, we're going to raster that, so it's going to go back and forth. I'm going to have a raster angle of zero, so that's going to be parallel to the x axis. If you want to do it parallel to the y axis, then you'd simply put in 90 degrees in there. Then we could go ahead and give that a name, so we'll just call this one 3D Finish, and we'll go ahead and press Calculate. Okay, so there's my toolpath, and then we can actually go ahead and preview that toolpath just to get a good visualization of what the parts will look like once it's done that finishing pass. Okay, so we can see that there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And it's important to look at this so that you can see the detail that you're going to get, where you can decide if you'd get a better result using a smaller tool or by editing the step over to get the preview that you're happy with. Okay, so I like what we've got there, so we could just put that in Z, and we could just simply close down that preview there. And so the last thing that we're going to do is run a profile toolpath to cut our lioness model out of our block of material. So in order to do that, we need to create a vector that represents the outline of the model, as we don't have the option to select model boundary in the profile toolpath. So let's switch over to the drawing tab and then we're going to come over into the layers tab here and we're just going to switch everything on, put all the visibility of all those layers on and we're just going to go into the 2D view and we'll just use this option here to zoom active view to draw in limits. Here we're actually going to take the grayscale of my model here and we're just going to right click and we're going to say move to layer, new layer and we're going to call this one grayscale and then we could make that visible press OK you'll see it's been added there now I'm only actually interested in getting the vector outline for the overall model so I'm actually going to switch off the grayscale there and then we're going to look at creating a vector boundary based on the vectors that we already have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out all of the vectors that represent the outline. So I'm going to select the tail, shift and select this bat leg, shift and select the body area here, shift and select the front leg, and then shift and select the head there. I'm going to right click and we're going to copy that to a new layer and we're going to call this layer cutout. Okay, we'll make sure that's visible. Then we could go ahead and press OK. I'm just going to switch off all the layers there, switch them on first, switch them off, and then we're just going to focus on the cutout layer where we copied those vectors to that new layer. I'm just going to make that the active layer. And with all of these vectors, what I'd like to do is look at welding them so we're just left with the actual silhouette of the outline of our lioness. So let's go into the drawing tab. We're going to use this icon here to weld selected vectors. And so you'll see there it's just removed all of the vectors inside and left us with the actual silhouette or the outline of our lioness model. So with that newly created vector, let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. We'll just look at tiling our windows horizontally so we can see both the 2D and the 3D view. So with that vector selected, let's go into the profile toolpath. Okay, start depth is going to be at zero, the top of the block. Cut depth, if we put in Z equals, it will tell us our material there. So we're working with three quarter inch material. Then we could choose our tool from the tool database. So we're going to use the select option here. I'm just going to use the quarter inch end mill there. We could go ahead and press OK. If I wanted to, I could just go ahead and edit that tool, check out the pass depth. Okay, and I can afford to up the pass depth to a quarter inch there so that we cut that in three passes. We'll go ahead and press OK. I'm going to machine that on the outside of those vectors. And then what we can do is we could look at adding tabs to hold my model into the actual material that we're cutting out. So let's check this option here to add tabs to toolpath. So here you can alter the length and the thickness. So for the length of this, we're just going to make that 0.3 and then the thickness, we'll just increase that a little to say 0.15. Then we use the edit tabs option here where we could 
put in a constant number or I could just simply go in and choose where I want my tabs to go. Okay, so for instance I'm just going to look at positioning them somewhere around here on the shoulder area and we'll come over, this area looks quite thin so we'll look at putting a tab on the tail there come over to the leg here and then over to the front leg there also so I think 4 should do the trick there so we could go ahead and press close we could give that a name so we'll call this one profile cutout and then we could simply go ahead and press calculate so let's just maximize the 3D view and then we'll just preview that toolpath Okay, so we can see how that part looks you can see that the quarter inch tool doesn't actually fit in between the actual chin and the front leg of the lioness and so what we could do is we could look at maybe using a smaller tool so let's just undo that last move there I'm just going to double click into the profile cutout and we're going to go into the select option to open up that tool database and we're going to look at using the 8 inch end mill go ahead press OK calculate that and then we can preview that toolpath there and we can clearly see that that tool is able to fit in there to cut our part out and you see that we are left with this bit of material here however I think it's small enough that I doubt it would do any harm to our tool or the dust collection system Okay, so I'm happy with what we've actually got here, so now would be a good idea to go ahead and save out our toolpaths. So let's go and press close here, and so to save our toolpaths we go to this icon here. Okay, now we know that our 3D roughing Z-level and our 3D roughing raster cut are cut using the same tool. So what we could do is select both of those and use this option here to output all visible toolpaths to one file. And so that will just save them to one file because we're using the same tool. So then you'd search for the appropriate post processor in the list here. So I'm just going to go over this general G code and then we we'll simply use the save toolpath option and you could save give that a name, press save and then save out the other two toolpaths that we have here in the list so save out your 3D finish and then you'd save out the profile cutout separately. Once you've done that you can then go ahead and take them over to your machine to cut the actual lioness out. And so that really completes this tutorial on the toolpath setup for the lioness model. So let's go ahead and save the file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder, we're going to call this one Lioness underscore 3D underscore Toolpaths. So press Save, and you can access that from the Project folder.